Hello everyone, welcome to Scott Reviews Things in four and a half minutes. What I'm reviewing today uh, for this one is Denny McLean's book, I Told You I Wasn't Perfect. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Denny McLean was a pitcher in the big leagues. He picked. He pitched mainly for Detroit. He was the last 30-game winner. Um, he did that in 1968, the year I was born, and the year the Tigers won the World Series. Uh, the last pitcher to do that was in 1934, Dizzy Dean. So... Uh, since 1934, there's only been two pitchers to win 30 games, Dizzy Dean and uh, Denny McLean. It is now, it's going to be 2019 here in about a month. So uh, the book is very, very good. Uh, it, uh, uh, Denny names, na the first half of the book, he talks about his time in the big leagues. In the second half of his book, he talks about his time in prison, two times in prison. Um, he also talks about the death of his daughter, which was... Which is, uh, you know, I don't have any kids, but I just can't imagine a parent losing a daughter. Um, he's very, very candid. The book is very, very candid. He names names. He talks bad about his, you know, he has no love for Mickey Lolich. I'll tell you that right now. He talks bad about Al Kaline. And if you know anything about Al Kaline, nobody says, nobody says anything bad about Al Kaline. He's, he's Mr. Tiger. Uh, but he does. He talks bad about Ted Williams, who was his manager for a little while when he was with Washington. So he, yeah, he 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 goes into detail. Uh, he talks about, and there's this one. He had kidney stones, and he talks about a very erotic and painful way that he got rid of kidney stones. I'll leave it at that. Uh, if you read the book, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And um, there's a the the infamous episode of him uh, hurting his ankle uh, because also when he was. In baseball, he was suspended a couple of times for having mob connections, and a lot of people speculated that um, the mob, you know, the mob broke his ankle. And but in the book, he says that he was sleeping on his couch. He got up, his foot was asleep. He stepped on it wrong. He broke, and all the, you know, he can basically confesses to everything he's ever done in this book. Uh, and so I think if it was actually a mob, a mob hit on him, it, he would have said so because he doesn't hold anything back in this book. He talks about being in prison. He talks about, uh, just how awful the conditions were in prison. He talks about getting screwed by the, uh, by the legal system. Um, and, uh, and he doesn't, you know, he, he doesn't, he, he learns, I guess, uh, he, he learns, uh, so he was in prison uh, one time, and that got overturned. Uh, 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 that conviction got overturned. Uh, he was out of baseball. He didn't have any money, so he was, you know, he was flying. He was flying drugs around. He was flying, uh, you know, uh, witness, you know, people around that he shouldn't have been flying around. So he he went to jail for that. That got overturned. Uh, then he lost his daughter. His daughter was killed in an auto accident in 1992, and that just sort of sent him over the deep end. So he started uh, back in his bad habits. Because after he got out of prison the first time, he became a famous, you know, he became a well-known broadcaster in Detroit. And he was he was back on his feet. He, he, you know, he actually got out of prison and he rehabilitated himself. But then after that, something snapped in him again, and he just got involved. Uh, he got involved with these people uh, that he was trying to reopen a, a meat plant in Michigan, and it just went south from the beginning. And he got uh, he got stuck uh, with uh, being embezzling uh, their pension fund. That's what he went to jail for embezzlement. And he just talks about his time in prison very candidly. And it's just uh, now the thing that you uh, take away from this book is when all this stuff first happened to him. He was just like, you know, he was blaming this person and he was blaming that person. And none of it was his fault. Well, in prison, he had an epiphany. He had a breakthrough. He finally, he finally took, you know, he took, you know, it upon himself. It's like, this was my fault. I did this to myself. I associated with these people. I, I, I was the person. I have to blame myself for what, the, for the predicament I'm in. And if I blame myself now and, I stop blaming other people. I 